This is Eugene Andrikovich. I'm the Laptop Screen Doc, and the name of the website is www.screensurgeons.com. Today we're going to be replacing a cracked screen on the Sony Vaio E-Series laptops. Um, out of all the major brands, Sony has the most confusing product names. Um, the official product name for this laptop Let's see if we can get a good focus. It's, it's hard to see in the slide, but it says VPC EE 23FX. Now try to remember that when you go into a store to buy a Sony. Now on top of that, on the back there is another part number, model number, and that's PCG-616 11L. So it has a VPC and a PCG number. But uh, basically, I think in the promotional literature, Sony refers it to as the E-Series. OK, when working on Sony laptops, it's very important to remove the battery. Sony laptops, out of all the laptops, are the most sensitive to damage if the battery is off it. So that's what we're going to do first, is remove the battery and put it to the side. You can see the owner of this laptop decorated it. Very pretty. Okay, so we want to remove the screen, broken screen, to replace it with a new screen. In order to get to the screen, we have to remove the plastic frame first. And in order to remove the plastic frame, we have to remove screws that are holding the plastic frame. And we're going to need some tools for this job. We have a small electronics screwdriver with a PH0 bit and a larger PH1 bit. We have an X-Acto knife. I'll show you in a minute what that's used for. We have a pair of sharp metal tweezers to get to small screws. And we have some sort of prying tool. Um, right now for this one I'm using a guitar pick, but you can also use a kitchen spreading knife or there are custom prying tools out there specifically for this job. Okay, so let's get started. There's four screws that we have to remove from the plastic frame and on top of them are some rubber feet. We use our exacto knife to remove the rubber feet. And what I like to do is stick them on the side so I don't lose them. We go one by one. Remove the rubber feet. This lighting's not the best right now. It's in the evening, so it's not as good as in daytime, but I think I can manage. And we got the last one. Okay, so we remove the rubber feet. Now we use the pH zero bit. Sony likes to use really fine screws and remove the screws one by one with a screwdriver. What I like to do with each set of screws is keep them in separate piles so when you're putting it back together, you're not confused by which screws go where because at the end of a bigger job you might end up with 20 screws lying around you want to know what goes where okay almost there three screws and i'm learning how to use my left hand to give you a better camera angle almost there and this one fell down so Let's put this in a pile, like so. Alright, so here comes probably the trickiest part of this job, is to remove the plastic frame without breaking it. And what I like to do is go from the screen side and start grabbing the plastic frame and listen for the snapping sounds. You see, hearing snapping sounds, that's good. That means the frame is coming off. So this one is not 
too bad. I think it just depends on each five box. So some are more difficult than others. And the plastic frame is off. So now we have the screen exposed. And the screen is held on by some metal mounting brackets with the screws on the side. Now for some laptops, it's easier to get for the screws. Some it's harder to get to the screws. This one, there's a four screws on each side and they're hiding behind a plastic piece. So it's a little bit harder. So we have to figure out a way to tilt the screen forward. And the trick I like to use for this is to loosen the metal mounting brackets down here so that we can tilt the screen forward a little bit. Like so. And to just not all the way, just enough so we can get to the screws on the side. Let's try to tilt it forward. And I think we have enough space to get to the small screws on the side. So we'll go one by one. This is where the tweezers come in. If the screw is stuck behind a piece of plastic, we can use tweezers to grab it out and we start a new pile. I wish the lighting was better, but work with what you can. I find the best time to get work done is after the kids have gone to bed. Have all evening. All right, so almost there. So we have four screws on one side. And then we rotate the laptop, and we have four screws on the other side. Now it's this bottom screw is still a bit hard to get to, so I'm going to loosen these screws a little bit some more. All right. So one. We get our trusty tweezers again to get the screw out. Try not to lose these. These are really tiny and they're really easy to drop and roll off. And these like to hide. Oh, this, this one hid, but I have spares. So I'm okay. So we got this one out and one more. All right, so when you get the last screw out, make sure the screen is tilted back a little bit so it doesn't flop down, fall down when you, all the screws are out. Okay, so now what we do is try to tilt the screen forward. Oftentimes the webcam cable is adhered to the back of the screen. And let's see what's going on here. Yep, so we're gonna loosen up the webcam cable so that we're able to put the screen down. So this is a older type of CCFL screen called cathode fluorescent light screen. The newer type screens are called the LED screens. So the older type screens have two connectors. One at the top here. We loosen up the tape and we pull it out like so. There's some adhesive here. So we loosen that up. And now we have the second connector, and this is to the inverter. That's the circuit that powers the lamp. So we pull, pull this connector out, and the screen is finally free. So this is what the screen looks like. It's a uh, 15.6 inch CCFL screen. There's a little pigtail here for the inverter connector, and then there's another connector here. Okay, so let's see if we can zoom in and get a good focus. Okay, this is probably as good as it's going to get. The part number for this screen is LP156. WH1. That's all you need to know. 
LP156WH1. If you search using that part number, you'll get a compatible screen. So these are pretty standard, pretty popular screens, so you shouldn't have any trouble. The other thing to notice is that it a, has a glossy finish, which most do, as opposed to a matte finish. And um, that's it. So when you get your new screen in, uh, put it back, reverse the procedure. A couple of things to remember. Sometimes I forget to tighten these screws at the bottom, so then I have to open it up and do it again. Make sure you don't forget. And uh, make sure you have the battery out when you're working on the laptop. And um, that's it. And good luck. Thank you.